building an Islamic framework very uh, quickly on homosexuality. Again, one can only judge a thing once it is properly conceived. So we realize the Western paradigm is just a totally different paradigm. It's not, you know, not yeah. something that's really compatible. So how do we as Muslims conceive of this? As I said, there's no single word for homosexuality in the Sharia, right? Again, in the West also, it's a new word because um, the Sharia addresses what? It addresses acts, yeah, not yeah. desires, yeah. i.e. Yeah. desires that are things that are beyond one's control, okay? Yeah. Um, Islam does not categorize human beings on the basis of mere desires, sexual or other, i.e. a person does not come to does not come to be a particular thing or come to constitute a particular class of human beings, right? A discrete, on the basis of mere desires and inclinations. Mm -hmm. Islam also does not place human beings into discrete identity categories on the basis of acts. Even if someone has a desire and is acting upon them, they're still not classified as a discrete you know, um, uh, type of human being. They're just someone who's, you know, sharab al-khamr, a drinker of wine is someone who drinks wine. If you stop drinking wine, you're not sharab al-khamr. Right. If you're engaged in same sex behavior, OK, maybe we'll, there's a term that describes your behavior. If you don't engage in it, there's no term that applies to you just because you might have the desire or may have uh, engaged in the act. Question. What is the best way to answer the question? What does Islam say about? I, I know the answer before you tell us the answer is I have the answer. Watch this video. Watch this video. Yeah. All three, <laughs> three and whatever, whatever. That's the answer to that question. Watch this video. <laughs> so what? So homosexuality. The, I hope people learn by now. What? That's a foreign term. I don't understand what it means. You know, we have to break it apart. So what? It, what do you mean by homosexuality? Question your terms always. So we have to distinguish between desires, acts, and identity. Again, in Islam, these are all three separate things. They have three separate rulings, three separate considerations, three separate conversations. They're not just wrapped up into one. What are the implications of accepting a Western sexual identity framework? Again, we've already hit this home on this several times. The identity framework changes the discussion. It elides moral concerns, puts them completely to the side, and it frames the issue as one of social justice defined subjectively, as opposed to one of God's command, Allah's command, which is paramount, obviously, for us as Muslims, and which itself embodies perfect justice. We cannot be more just than God. We cannot be more compassionate. He is a Rahman, a Rahim, right? And when I say it changed the conversation, when I was growing up in the 80s, it was still common for people to say, LGBT didn't exist, by the way, We only homosexuality. I mean, the, the acronym, I think, came in the 90s. And people would say, what do, you what do you think of homosexuality? This was commonly asked in the 80s. And it was understood, again, the larger you know, um, assumptions of the culture, it was understood that you were asking about the actions wow. and you were asking what was your moral opinion of them. It was understood that the question was asking about the morality of the actions. And most people would have said, I think it's wrong. That, that was like the normal thing to say in the 80s. Now it's not, the word homosexuality is not used. Asking where you stand on it is like unacceptable. Right. We've replaced it now with LGBTQ. The reason why I say Muslims should avoid this term is because it is an identity term. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. it, it is inherently an identity term the way it's been used. So so the only question today, and it's not really a question because there's only one answer that you're, you can have is where do you stand on LGBT rights? So it went 30 years from what do you think about the morality of a particular act? to where do you stand on the civil rights of a discrete minority? Forget about what the acts might be at all. It's just a question of, do you believe in equality, freedom, and justice, or are you a bigot who hates people? I mean, that, that's how it's like, that's the conversation today, right? And, and this is a direct result of the identity paradigm, you know, primarily. 